Hi, my name is Joseph Buxbaum. I'm a professor here at Mount Sinai uh, in the Department of Psychiatry. Genomics is a term that's sometimes used interchangeably with genetics. The difference is that when we think about genetics and genetic studies, we tend to study one gene at a time. In genomics, we try and study at one time all the genes in the human genome. So we each have about 20,000 different genes in our DNA, and genomics is the study of all 20,000 genes at the same time as they relate to a trait or to a disorder. One of the important early findings in autism was the demonstration that it is largely caused by genetic factors. And so using modern technology, we can now look across the genome, in other words, at all 20,000 genes, to try and identify the genes that are actually contributing to the development of autism. And with new technology that emerged with the Human Genome Project, we've been able to look at tens of thousands of samples of individuals with autism or without autism, and have identified many, many genes that are part of the architecture of autism. We now know of several hundred genes that when mutated can cause autism. What does this mean? It means that genes that are involved in development that are highly conserved uh, evolutionarily, which means that they don't change much because they need to do just what they do. If they take on a mutation, in other words, a spontaneous event that changes the DNA, then they can cause changes in development. And so these more than 100 genes that have been found over the past years that contribute to autism carry a mutation, and very often they carry a de novo mutation or a spontaneous mutation. In other words, mom and dad aren't transmitting the mutation, but the mutation is a spontaneous mutation that occurred uh, before conception. And these mutations affect development, and then they produce developmental outcomes, which autism is one of those outcomes. And in the cases of individuals carrying these kinds of mutations, we consider that much of the manifestation of autism comes from the mutation that they carry. So if we think about a well-known example of Fragile X syndrome, we know that individuals with Fragile X syndrome are at higher risk for many developmental issues, including autism. So that's an example of a mutation. And what we've done over the past years throughout the world and international consortia is found more than 100 genes that like Fragile X syndrome uh, produce a behavioral phenotype when mutated. Because the mutations we are talking about are unusual, uh, they can often readily be detected by genetic testing. What this means is a family can come in to a genetic testing laboratory have blood drawn, and, and the, genetic, the genetic testing laboratory will then look for these unusual um, changes in the genome. So what does that mean? It means that the family in the end, and we think about 30% of individuals with autism, and particularly those with profound autism, can get a genetic diagnosis. So the family gets a genetic diagnosis, and this helps understand what is causing uh, the behavioral manifestations and, pop, and li most likely other medical conditions in the individual and helps define how to best care for that individual. The family also gets information about family counseling. And in some cases of some of these mutations, there are family foundations and advocacy groups that get together to try and learn from each other, but also try to move the field forward to help address any challenges that their family experiences in the context of these genetic mutations. Over the long term, of course, genetic mutations of any kind have the possibility of being treated with genetic therapies or gene-based therapies, 
We are not there yet, but in some cases of profound autism, there are already clinical trials that are targeting mutations in the relevant gene with the expectation that they will provide significant improvements in quality of life. When a genetic cause for autism is identified, then clinicians can begin to understand whether there are changes or what to expect with that particular genetic form of autism. There are studies which are called natural history studies where clinicians and clinician researchers follow a disorder or a condition over time to see if there's anything that they need to be anticipating or watching out for. So for example, if somebody is at higher risk for a certain kind of cancer, then we know to be to surveil, to watch carefully over time to make sure that cancer does not appear. So the same is also true for developmental disorders. If somebody comes in with autism, but we know because of genetic testing that they may have risk for some for example, kidney abnormality, then the doctor will immediately look for that and be able to be proactive about comorbid risk factors. So that's already happening. But the more exciting thing is that once you have a genetic diagnosis, it provides a tool to develop novel treatments that are specific for that genetic condition. So as we all know, nowadays with cancer, very often the most effective treatments for cancer are based on the genetic makeup of the cancer. And the treatment is tailored to the, to the genetic makeup. This is called precision medicine. This sort of approach is now also being done in pediatric disorders, developmental disorders, and adult disorders that affect development, motor, motor abilities, and behaviors. We are still at very early days, but the expectation is that for profound autism caused by genetic mutations, there will be opportunities to develop specific treatments for those individuals that will benefit them enormously and will be tailored specifically to their mutations.